What's up everyone, this is Kefren, your favorite French Canadian. Today we're diving into a detailed review of the Fly DG Vader 4 Pro controller. Uh, this advanced game controller has been making waves and I'm excited to share my thoughts after spending some quality time with it. At around 79 USD dollar, depending on where you buy it, this controller packs a lot of features for its price point. First off, let's talk about the build quality and design. The Vader 4 Pro is built almost identically to the uh, Vader 3 Pro, but with a slightly stealthier all black design and also have a special edition with Assassin's Creed Black Flight. It's quite similar in weight to the V3P and much lighter than the Apex 4. The fill in end is solid and the overall uh, construction seems very durable, no flex, no creaking. One of the standout feature is the force adjustable lever uh, joystick. The tension adjustment rings are tighter than expected, requiring two finger and, and decent force to rotate it, ensuring you, you won't accidentally change uh, settings during gameplay. After some times, I feel like now they're more loose so I can do it uh, with just my thumbs, but it's still it will not move when you're playing the game. Uh, the tension setting aligns closely with the Apex 4, which is a neat touch. Another key feature is the joystick dedicated chip, which achieves a linear control curve. During my testing, the stick demonstrated a lower tension setting than the Apex 4, and while this can introduce stick drift if anti-drift uh, algorithms are turned off, it provides a very responsive and raw feeling. Here's my result from the joystick tester. The left stick displays a circle pattern, while the the right one will show a rectangle pattern. The hybrid D-pad and the Mecha Tactical ABXY button offer a satisfying click with a 0.3 mm actuation. The micro switches on the D-pad feel uh, slightly tighter compared to the Apex 4, providing a responsive and tactile experience. Additionally, the face button have a lighter actuation with less pre-travel, making them feel more precise. The Vader 4 Pro offers a 1000Hz polling rate when connected wirelessly with the dongle or via a wire connection, ensuring an ultra-low latency of just 1ms. When using Bluetooth, the polling rate is 125Hz, which is still quite responsive, but some t something uh, to keep in mind for competitive gaming. In terms of gameplay, I test the Vader Pro uh, extensively with Forza Horizon 5 on PC. The controller feels incredibly responsive thanks to the increased resolution from 10 to 12 bit and the looser centering spring. Setting the joystick center sensitivity to slow help fine tune my control, making it uh, feel more accurate for precision gameplay. I also test on showdown on PC with this controller as the game has no aim assist. I was really impressed by how responsive and precise this controller can be in FPS game. Additionally, being able to reduce the trigger distance to just like 0.3 mm depending on the game you're playing is a significant advantage and a very cool feature. The four switchable vibration trigger with 250 level precise linear control add a new dimension to the gaming experience. The trigger rumble are noticeably better and less rightly compared to my Turtle Beach Ultra or even just the Xbox controller. And with four remappable additional button plus the C and Z button, you get an high level of customization. So now let's take a look at FlyDG Space 3.4 software. Can do a lot of stuff with it. And after that, I'm gonna give you my conclusion. So now for the FlyDG Space uh, Station. So you have three different tab over there. You have your PC config, your test, and your Nintendo Switch config also. Uh, over there, really important to make sure that you have the latest firmware of your controller. So this is pretty much your home with the uh, recap of everything that you change over there. You have four different config. Regular shooting, fighting, and racing. You can edit them, rename them, you import, export, and stuff like that. So we're going to go first of all in button. So this is pretty much all your back button on your controller. The C and the Z right now. You can config configure them uh, all as you want, depending on what you're, you want to play. Joystick, pretty much the same thing. You can change them individually. So for an example, on my left, if I want an instant curve, you can do that. And on the right, you want a delayed. 
so pretty easy to change honestly so really cool feature uh, you can also change the joystick center over there with the compensation and the dead zone and you have this circularity algorithm over there if you want like circle or rectangle when i did my test i said circle and rectangle for the right joystick as you can see for the gyro, uh, it's pretty much there. Trigger, you have a couple of options also with your trigger. So if you want to change your stroke setting, you want to change the vibration. So again, a lot of options. This is pretty much new trigger amplitude. I didn't see that on my Apex 4. So cool feature that they add. And in general, you can change your LED as you can see with different mode, brightness, etc. The very cool place to go is your function settings. So over there, uh, the joystick depends. I recommend to activate it. It stabilizes your joystick when you just move slightly. So really cool feature. Automatic calibration also. Just make sure that you always go at zero when you your joystick go back to the middle. So really cool also feature. Uh, joystick accuracy. By default, it will be at 10 bit. Uh, me, I'm using 12 right now. Honestly, I'm not sure if I see the difference between 10 and 12, <laughs> but anyway, I just put it at, at max. Uh, joystick pull pulling rate, 1000 Hz. Really weird over there. They're saying that the pulling rate of the controller has no impact on the controller battery life. I was kind of surprised because the refresh rate is a lot faster than those ones. So honestly, I'm... I'm I, I need to test this one for sure. But anyway, they're, they're saying it. And the last one, the joystick center sensitivity. This is the one that I said that slow uh, the uh, my joystick was a lot more um, precise. So this is where you change it. And I'm not using the uh, joystick uh, rebounds algorithm. So if you want to test your controller, it's pretty much there. As you can see, you see the bounce rate right now. I'm going to try to hit the 1000. We just saw it. So this is where you can do your testing. So this is pretty much it. You have a lot of feature. It's not very user friendly, but still it's doing the job. So now let's do my conclusion. So now let's do the pros and cons. So the first one uh, for the pros, highly customizable for the price. Offer an extensive customization option for its price range. It's pretty incredible. Also, impressive performance and responsiveness deliver a very responsive and rough feel, making ideal for precision gameplay. I really like also the build quality. The controller is well made with durable materials and a sleek all black design. And I really enjoy my special edition Assassin's Creed. And the last one, it's very affordable at $79 USD. It provides a great value for the feature that you will have. For the cons, comprehensive software but not user-friendly, the uh, FlyDG Space Station software offer many features but its interface could be a lot more intuitive. So overall, my experience with the FlyDG Vader 4 Pro has been positive. Uh, the build quality, customization option and responsive control make it a strong contender in the market. While there are minor issues like the mechanical dead zone on lower tension settings, the, these can be mitigated with the right adjustment in the software. So if you're looking for a versatile and highly customizable controller compatible with Windows, Nintendo Switch, Android, and iOS, honestly, the Vader 4 Pro is definitely worth considering. It offers a great blend of feature and performance that can enhance your gaming experience. So thanks for watching, guys. If you have any questions, just comment in the YouTube section. Any question about previous controller that I review or about this one, I will try to help you the best that I can. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Peace!